Welcome back to the channel. This is MG. We're kind of returning to our regularly scheduled programming, meaning that um, going back to commentary, at least for this video and probably a couple videos. So you saw the title. Today's video is about Into the Wild, which is a subject matter, both movie and book, that I tend to return to every couple of years. I'm not really sure why I've been looking into Chris McCandless and his unnecessary death again, um, but I have read the book and I've seen this movie a few times, and I'm rewatching it. And so, as you can see, that's Emil Hirsch playing McCandless um, towards the end of McCandless's life when Chris is dying of starvation and not dying of poison berries like author John Krakauer posited for quite some time. But really, as I've um, read some internet articles state, this was a case, very much so, of Occam's Razor, where McCandless simply starved to death as he went into the woods with a mere 10-pound bag of rice, 22 rifle, and anyway, if you're watching this video, you're more than likely familiar with the story, or you've seen this movie. So that's your introduction, and the reason that I wanted to do this video is because the subject matter is so fascinating to me, because McCandless represents naivete, certainly, but also a sense of adventure that I think is within every man, and perhaps woman. Although, of course, without getting into gender politics at all, I do feel that biologically, men are more adventurous than women. They tend to strike out into the wild, um, as the title of this film says, in search of uncharted territory, which Krakauer, in his decent book, um, despite that theorizing at the end that McCandless here died of berries that poisoned him, which is untrue, Krakauer goes into, you know, one thing McCandless was trying to do is to find a blank spot on the map, and that there is none. However, McCandless's solution was to simply, and I quote, throw away the map. So, you know, let's get back to Chris here. Obviously, I'm not going to play any of this, um, besides the still image. I don't want to get copyright stricken. So, why do this video? What is my opinion of the situation? Um, do I think McCandless was a complete idiot? No, I don't. Um, Krakauer talks about how um, perhaps Chris was emboldened, or, or maybe it was another source, because honestly I've been listening to all sorts of podcasts and whatever I can get my hands on, my grubby little hands, about McCandless. Um, Chris had done things like kayak this huge river and end up in Mexico and just all this crazy shit that he kept getting away with pretty scot-free and so it emboldened him to go up to Alaska pretty unprepared you know quite unprepared um, and to think he would somehow make it and obviously he was mistaken that's the naivete do I think he was a complete idiot no but I think he was pretty foolish and it's not something I would do the reason for this video and for my entire fascination and interest in the case of McCandless, ever since I saw this movie, I think, I'm pretty sure I, I, like you and millions of people, saw this movie directed by Sean Penn, was inspired by it, despite the film's flaws, and read the book, and was on that subject matter for some time. And it's, as I say, it's something I revisit every few years because I do travel a lot, I don't have a lot tying me down in this world. I don't own property, not married. It's part of being a MGTOW dude, although that was never really intentional. MGTOW, of course, standing for men going their own way. And Media GTOW, my little self-appointed username here, because I was interested in analyzing um, not just news media, but media such as what you're seeing here, Into the Wild, from a more MGTOW perspective, which is perhaps, hopefully, what we're doing right now. You know, perhaps McCandless fascinates me so much because he was essentially MGTOW before that term or even idea existed. Um, admittedly, obviously, McCandless was, you know, very idealistic in his 
his kind of, what is the word I'm looking for? It's not denial, but his dislike of materialism. And it's it's been proven since that McCandless did not do things like Sean Penn shows in this film like, such as burn his social security card uh, or even burn all his money. These things have been disproven. Perhaps in Corrine McCandless's Chris's sister's book, which is slightly a different topic, but I do think his sister is kind of opportunistic. You know, her brother died, and when I was looking up podcasts about Chris, all I could find was her appearances on podcasts. You know, so his sister does creep me out a little bit. Um, the relationship as portrayed in this film between Corinne and Chris McCandless is pretty creepy and incestuous, and it's closer than a brother and sister should be. Um, and also, the film here does not get into the abuse that Chris's parents allegedly inflicted on their kids. And I haven't read Corinne's book because I don't really want to support that opportunism. But let's get back to the sense of adventure that I admire about Chris, despite him killing himself. You know, I think um, Chris didn't know where he was going to end up. Now, a lot of facts about his childhood and upbringing show that in a lot of ways, Chris's odyssey across the United States was psychologically based. What do I mean by that? He was trying to escape his parents. It's maybe not some big Thoreau-esque odyssey or journey that we all interpret it to be. And I think the interpretation's fantastic. What we're really seeing, though is that Chris was just fleeing his post-college life. Now, he saw a lot of things, had some great adventures, and also ended up, you know, dying in a bus due to his own ignorance. So it's a dangerous game that you play when you're overly confident um, in your own abilities. But what do I and what do we admire about Chris. Damn HBO Max. What do we admire? It is the the footloose and fancy free nature. Most people who are watching this video are going to be constricted and tied down to some location. Uh, you know, their city, their family. You have a million reasons why you can't do what McCandless did. Why you can't pick up and go with a backpack, hitchhike, hop trains. It's romantic. What I've been trying to say in a long-winded fashion, I suppose, is that we all I admire and idealize the romantic lifestyle of traveling with nothing. And I think it'll always be romantic, and we should do it while we can. We can live like McCandless, but with more Caution. As Jan says, played by Katherine Keener, you have to be a little cautious, Alex. And instead of being a little cautious, Chris McCandless was balls to the wall, living life till it killed him. And I think we're always going to admire men who died young in pursuit of their vision. And I think that's what Chris McCandless represents. Um... And I, I don't even know that I've fully conveyed what I intend to with this video. It's that I more admire McCandless than mock him or think he was foolish. You know, Alaskans in particular have a lot of disdain. I think disdain, there we go, was the word I was looking for. Alex's, Chris's disdain for society and money. Um, similar disdain that Alaskans had for Chris. You know, Alex Supertramp. Um, because he was foolish and he got attention for dying when, uh, yeah, it was this other podcast that I'm really um, paraphrasing, but when Chris got attention for dying and a lot of Alaskans who have accomplished a lot more never got any attention for living. Hopefully that makes sense. You know, the 
encounters that you have when you're a single young man and you're available to be an influential presence in people's lives which I think Chris was even though he probably was selfish and was sure he was utilizing people for food and these kind of things along the way Um, but he inspired people along the way as well with his adventurous spirit and what I hope to do with my life is to inspire others and I don't and I guess that sounds pretentious Um, maybe it is and maybe I'm not an inspiration yet I aspire to be an inspiration I aspire to inspire and so we should always be aspiring to be more free and to be more available to people what is being available it's not being tied down and say what you want about Chris McCandless, but he was not tied down. And if you're not tied down, you can be more in the moment. And what Chris was seeking was spirituality. So, this has been uh, Media Gito stuttering a little bit high, if I admit to you. And have a nice day.